It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast show on a Friday morning. I'm not quite sure how South Africans are feeling right now when we think and talk rugby because... I think we, a little schizophrenic. Yeah, man. We, <laughs> we've made history in all the kind of wrong ways. The first time yeah. that we've lost four consecutive matches in, uh, since 1965 and dropped to number five in the world. Pressure increasing. I was on the embattled coach, as you said, Heineken yeah. Mayer, and people you know, questioning whether we are even worthy of the World Cup the way that we've been playing. Um, I think so much. There obviously are a lot of big questions raised about our World Cup campaign mm. and the standard of the rugby. And I think at the heart of that, a transformation debate has begun. So we've invited Liz McGregor from Business Day to join us to talk about what has become a highly politicised subject. And in a matter of about three weeks, all of this has come out. Surely these are issues that we should have been broaching over the last few years. But Liz, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. A lot has been said about the validation of the claims that have been made about the five black players that approached Kasatu. In your mind, in your experience from what you've been able to unearth, can we put much stock in this? Do you think this is true? Well, I have to say that, you know, having been spoken to black players, it seems highly credible to me. Mm. Um, I just want to point out here in my book two years ago, Springbok Factory. <laughs> I interviewed a black Springbok who came up with exactly these claims. He said black players are sidelined and marginalised, that white coaches trust only their own kind. Black players got to prove themselves over and over again. So it seems highly credible to me. Mm -hmm. And if you were to kind of throw your expert eye over the team, who would you say are some of the players that you would have ex expected to see in the team that aren't there? Well, for instance, Skara Intervene, you know, he was the yeah. informed hooker throughout Super Rugby. Um, and there was the best front row in, in the campaign, the, the, the Stormers front row. Um, and he not even third choice hooker, and in fact, the latest news last night is he's actually been sent home, which wow. I find a bit strange. Well, while some fans might then ask, is he good enough? Would is you he say our number he one is? hooker? Well, you know, obviously everyone's got an opinion about this, but the fact is he was the informed hooker in the best team in Super Rugby. Now, I think the, the, the sad reality is this is now a few weeks away from the start of the Rugby World Cup. So much of our identity as a country is interwoven into how we feel about our big sporting brands, rugby in particular. Uh, do you feel that we're starting to see a negative backlash now? Are we starting to see young black rugby fans turning away from rugby because of what's being pushed out in the press on a daily basis? Yeah, look, I think it's deeply unfortunate because, as you say, we love our rugby oh, and yeah. the whole country wants to get behind it. So to f certainly find that it is a source of division and anger and tension is incredibly unfortunate. And I really hope that, you know, that, that, that something is done about it very soon. Yeah. And of course, the name Jesse Creel has been thrown around. Yeah. He, had a, he had a smashing debut game, which was amazing, uh, at centre. But then, of course, his selection last week at wing uh, was questioned uh, in terms of the Springbok squad itself and then also in terms of transformation. Was, was that like a spit in the face of transformation, do you think? I think it was, you, you know, normally, at least, you know, even the most recalcitrant team puts, you know, a couple of black guys on the wings. And here we get a, you know, a black guy <laughs> replaced by a white guy. So I thought that was extremely unfortunate. Yeah. Sometimes it's about playing the game at the right moment. We know that it is as much a political game as um, one you know, looking to achieve results on the field. So what is the answer now? Uh, do, do we need a new coach? I know there's, there's already sure. talk of Heineken Mayer getting um, another four-year contract. Should that be nipped in the bud at this stage? Should the sports minister get involved in your mind? Where do we start to, to see the shift or at least push for a change? Look, I, I think you can't always blame the coach. This has been going on for a long time. And basically, Saru has done nothing in the 20 years to properly address transformation. I've just come back from a research trip to the Eastern Cape. And it is full of passionate, extremely good rugby players. Yeah. And they just are not given a chance. You know, from a very basic start, Saru could have been putting money into rugby schools like Dale yeah. and Graham and, uh, you know, Queens where there's huge talent, you've got all the infrastructure, and the boys, a lot of the time, just don't get enough to eat. It's quite a simple thing yeah. to get right. And the latest thing Saru has done is cut off funds to the academy in, in Port Elizabeth, which I find extraordinary. So it's that, and also, you know, you've got to have white. All coaches on the main teams are white. And that's not necessarily a problem, but... Yeah, you can, yeah. You can understand yeah. the knock-on effect. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Liz, exactly. thank you very much for joining us this morning. Liz McGregor from Business Day. Uh, now, at the risk of a highly controversial and heated debate, I am going to ask that you comment on the issue on yeah. Facebook. Espresso Morning Show, SABC3. What is your stance on transformation, especially in rugby, as we look forward to the Rugby World Cup? Tweet us as well, at Espresso Show. Hashtag Espresso Show. Let's see what people have to say. Yeah, where there, do man. we draw that line in supporting the box as well? Let's get into official duties this morning and get back into our news headlines.